Friends, what could the recent project over at the Haunted Mansion have to possibly do with Tomorrowland? And what do new main gates at the front of Disneyland have to do with Tomorrowland? How can we look at all the recent announcements and Disneyland's activity over the last couple of years and predict that Disneyland has officially, officially given up on Tomorrowland? Ricky here showing you what all of the years of Western End development has taught me about the future of Tomorrowland and what I was able to take from this newly announced project of the Haunted Mansion that showed me the last bit of evidence that I needed to see that Tomorrowland is a complete teardown and do over. Everything here eventually will be ripped down to the dirt and Disney will attempt to rebuild back this land as a better version of tomorrow or something else when the idea comes to them. Let's get started on an update special. This is a topic I've wanted to break down for a long time, and I'm so excited you show up to break this down with me. Starting with Disneyland's Western End, this stretch is the most flawless stretch of theme park design that Disney has ever created, as well as any of their competition. It is absolutely flawless, the way each land, each attraction just falls right into the next one. It's all killer no filler, and yet this is where they have put a lot of their extra time and effort while ignoring Tomorrowland. But friends, let's take a tour of all the projects that have recently happened in the last handful of years on Disneyland's beloved Western End stretch. We had the Tropical Hideaway fully get built. This wasn't here, it was the Aladdin's weird meet and greet area. It was a dead space and now there's a full on restaurant where you can sit next to the Jungle Cruise. Up next, the Jungle Cruise. Had a lot of new scenes put in, was massaged, it was plussed and made much better. Just last year, Indiana Jones was taken down for a while, went through methodically, each scene was reworked, new lighting. They made it so much better, even worked on its massive queue that basically walks you out into a parking lot to go on this adventure with Indiana Jones. And then there's the Tarzan's Treehouse, which is now just the Adventureland Treehouse, where they removed the piece that was in the middle of the walkway, redid the entire attraction, and mind you, they took their sweet time doing it, but the end product is pretty damn good. And even though it's a part of the Rivers of America, we even saw them take the Mark Twain and fully, I mean fully, go all the way down to basically the, the studs on this boat and completely rebuild so many parts of it. New windows, new paint, new light bulbs, new paddle wheel on the back. They went through this thing with a fine tooth comb and made the best version of the Mark Twain that guests are gonna see for quite some time. And who could forget the addition of Tiana Land with Tiana's store inside of New Orleans Square proper, Tiana's palace on the outer edge of New Orleans Square, and Tiana's Bayou Adventure coming where Splash Mountain used to be. Tiana Land has come in the last recent years, and uh, she's everywhere. She's the most popular gal in New Orleans Square. But there's also been infrastructure projects over here. Like, remember when they redid all of the sidewalks around me? And they also put in the new Pelican Landing, the new dining area that sits right on the banks of the Rivers of America. This area has been a complete land of transformation, and it's wild because it was perfect the way that it was. And then there's also the massive Haunted Mansion project that's happening right now, where they're re-sculpting Magnolia Park, making that part of the queue for the Haunted Mansion, making the other side an area to sit and eat for guests that are overflowing from Tiana's. The Haunted Mansion is getting a new elevator system put in it, new projections, a, a complete, utter teardown on the eastern end of the Haunted Mansion, but that's not it. We're also getting a brand new shop on the exit point of the Haunted Mansion, themed after Madame Leota. This is to clean up some of the sight lines of Tiana's Bayou Adventure that'll be coming on the other side of this shop. But friends, there is new things happening nearly everywhere in New Orleans Square. And if it hasn't already been touched, it's being worked on right now, leaving Poor, poor Pirates of the Caribbean, the only major attraction that hasn't received any significant TLC in the last couple of years. Which makes me wonder, what are they gonna do next to Pirates when they're done with the mansion? Because Disney is hell-bent on massaging every nook and cranny of its most successful stretch of the park, while leaving the other end completely abandoned, 
of new projects, of new ideas, or anything relatively that looks like a promising sign of a better tomorrow. Now that we've seen everything that's happening on the busy western end, let's jump over to Tomorrowland, where the contrast couldn't be any more different. Even though Disney may be giving up on Tomorrowland, there's no reason to give up on Hey Bricky. What do you say? Subscribe to the channel where each week I'm working hard to put up three well thought out and curated Disneyland videos to bring you into the past, future, and present of everything that's happening with Disneyland on a business design, sort of the thinking man's channel, if you will, about how all these different pieces on the chessboard are getting moved around to create a future of Disneyland based on its rich history and past. What do you say? Subscribe to Hey Bricky and join me on this three day a week adventure. I appreciate you. When we look at Star Tours, we see a ride that was great for that moment in time, but that moment has passed. It feels antiquated, it feels outdated. And let's be honest, the new Ahsoka adventure that is coming to the attraction is really only happening because when Disney updates one Star Tours, they have the ability to update all the Star Tours globally. If there was only one in Disneyland, no way would they be putting the money and time into updating this single attraction. If we look at the front of the building, it's obviously dented up where a work truck came by and slammed it overnight when they were doing some sort of refurbishments around the park. This attraction has served the Disney fans very, very well but the time for this Chuck E. Cheese attraction to move on is officially about a year or two behind us when Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and Smuggler's Run opened up, giving guests a different version of a Star Wars experience in a land fully dedicated to this intellectual property. Buzz Lightyear, this attraction is an amazing people eater. When it's open, it sucks in large amounts of people, giving families the ability to do a gameplay ride that is very important to younger citizens of Disneyland. Interaction is the keystone of this generation's experiences and with the world. That being said, there is really no reason to leave Buzz here. It hasn't had any sort of updates or major refurbishments in quite, quite some time. Astro Orbiter, what can you say in about an attraction that can physically be removed from the park, taken off site to get its maintenance and then brought back? Could you ever see them actually just saying, well, we're just gonna haul off the Haunted Mansion and when we're done, we'll bring it back to Disneyland. This is a carnival style ride with a light Disneyland wrapping around it. I don't think anybody would miss it when it's gone and most people don't when it is gone. And we have the Utopia Subs Lagoon area. This plot of land is about the same size of all of Toontown or all of Main Street USA. If you do not visit this land on your visit, that means that you have completely ignored an entire land's worth of land. Think about how much money on your last trip you spent in the Main Street USA area or how much time you spent in Toontown. If you ride Utopia or the subs, that is the equivalent to using the same amount of space. This is a huge, huge parcel of land that Disney could fully turn into its own separate land if they were willing to give up on this. And I know a lot of people will say, but Utopia, opening day attraction, not this version. This is not the original version. Yes, it is named after Walt's vision that was before we had our highway system in America, but the highway system is here and Utopia still is as well. Think about it, one whole land, three or two different attractions, restaurants and shops, Disney could make so much more money off of this land than what they're currently doing, which is about zero. And then we get into Disneyland's famous broken attraction, the People Mover, that literally goes through nearly every single building inside of Tomorrowland. And in some of those buildings where the People Mover goes through it, it is connected to load bearing parts of those buildings. The People Mover can't be torn down because it is integrated through every single part of Tomorrowland, making removing it nearly impossible. And that's why we've had the relic of an attraction going all through the land, creating disturbances and how guests are able to walk through this land for several decades. And not one indication that it's gonna change in the next decade. 
and Tomorrowland happens to be the home to empty buildings. Buildings that are not being used whatsoever for the guest experience. The back end of Starcade only gets opened up for signings and photo ops for after hours events. The Magic Eye Theater, where Captain EO was at for years, has been closed since Tomorrowland the movie came out or maybe the first Guardians of the Galaxy. Either way, it's been an extremely long time since that's been used for guests. And let's talk about the latest big improvement to Tomorrowland. There it is, right there, a DVC lounge. That's the newest and greatest best thing that has come to Tomorrowland. And probably only about 5% of the visitors of Disneyland or less get to use this brand new thing that came to Tomorrowland, a lounge for a level of the Disney elite. But that's it. That is the newest thing that Tomorrowland has, a lounge for only a small sector of the audience base. The biggest thing that has kept Tomorrowland on life support for such a long time is the tremendous success of Space Mountain. This is by far a perennial favorite. It gets ranked nearly every single year in the Southern California Best Theme Park Attractions as one of the top 10 attractions for people to visit when they come to Southern California. Space Mountain is an absolute Disneyland OG legend, and most folks will tell you that this is one of their favorite rides, if not possibly their favorite attraction. But there's a problem with Space Mountain. It is located in the dead center of this land. This was the anchor to draw people further into the Tomorrowland experience, and because it's dead center, they've had a hard time of figuring out how do we redo this land when the one part we want to save is in the center. If Space Mountain had been built all the way over to the south or all the way over to the north, it would have been a no-brainer, but it's not. It's in the middle, it's extremely successful, and there has lied the most major problem on redoing Tomorrowland is the success of its icon, and its icon is, is right. in a location that it makes it nearly impossible to figure out how to reshape all of this without committing to the old look, the old aesthetic, and the old way of thinking. Space Mountain has been Tomorrowland's biggest success, but also probably one of its biggest problems. And I believe everything that we're seeing over on the West End is proof that Tomorrowland is a complete teardown. It will be ripped down to dirt and something new will be born in this space behind us. And I look at it this way, when you are done living in your home and you know that you're gonna sell it in the next couple of years, what do you start doing? You start patching holes, putting a new coat of paint on things, but you stop doing any significant improvements to the house. Because why? You know that you're gonna move. You spend all of your time shopping, looking at other homes, daydreaming about what you want next, what's wrong with this place, and how do you wanna fix it in your next investment in your family's future. Tomorrowland is the exact same way. Zero significant improvements over the last set of years, just keeping a coat of paint on it, patching the leaks, and hoping that it can just keep running until they get to that next moment. Because just like you in this scenario, Disney is already thinking about what's next. Where do they wanna move next? Where do they wanna take this land next? And I think that there is another big play at hand here that's gonna help make that decision for the future of Tomorrowland. And that part of the story is tethered into Disneyland Ford and the land that exists way behind Space Mountain. As part of the future of the resort, Disney definitely wants to try to blow out the eastern end of Disneyland. All of that wasted space that's currently used for loading and unloading infrastructure for guests, they want all of that to exist on the other side of Harbor. Therefore, allowing that plot of land to not be used for infrastructure, but theme park entertainment space. So, why would you want to do anything to Tomorrowland today when you think in the tomorrow you'll have even more land to sculpt out your vision and possibly with getting rid of Utopia and the submarines where I'm standing right now, make one to three different lands where one broken land sits today. And I believe once they have finally secured all that land and have all the different pieces in play, that is when Tomorrowland will get bulldozed, something new will come, 
And I honestly believe one of those new things will be the new version of Space Mountain that we've seen them already start to build over in Tokyo. That attraction has already been built. There's already a working game plan to replicate it out here would be a very affordable and calculated win because they already know that people love Space Mountain. Now recently, Disneyland applied for permits to put new gates in the front of Disneyland and of DCA, but they have not put in any permits to fix the main problem on getting into the parks is the outdated, antiquated, slow to go through security system. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you why. I believe that everything behind us is on pause as they want to move all of this over to the harbor where security would be moved over there and all of this land could get annexed into Tomorrowland and also into Hollywoodland. The two most problematic parks at the Disneyland Resort, their futures depend on how much land they will actually have to expand. So both of them will be completely on pause until this land, this permit, this plan has been laid out. Expect them both to stay in a state of pause as the future lies right behind me. If you wanna learn more about this, make sure you check out this video right here in my Disneyland Forward series, and make sure you hang out with me on Tuesday when I will break down all the news that I've been able to discover from the new main gates coming, and trust me, it's a lot more than you think.